we are P9. Very good ratio. Finally, we have a point. Hey guys, welcome back to the Jules Bianchi Tribute Career Mode, and in this episode we head over across the Atlantic Ocean for the Canadian Grand Prix taking place at the Circuit de Gilles Villeneuve, a circuit that's hosted many classic races over the years, for example the 2011 Canadian Grand Prix, which has been my favourite race of all time that I've ever watched. So let's see if we can generate another classic race today. It's Sunday afternoon here in Montreal, and we're about to find out who's best prepared to take on this 4.3 kilometer track, and of course, the infamous Wall of Champions. Here are the starting positions for today's race. So we're starting from 19th place on the grid, ahead of both Caterhams and our teammate Max Chilton. This is what the top 10 looks like. Nico Hulkenberg getting involved in the top 10 in 10th. The two Williams and two Red Bulls occupying the second and third row with Mercedes locking out the front row once again. Alright, we're on the grid for today's race. You can see this is what the strategy we're going to be using. I thought about going on to the Prime tyre to start off with, but it turns out that both the options and the Primes have a similar lifespan, so I thought I'm going to, I'm going to stay on the option tyres for the first stint and then see what happens from there. So without further ado, let us begin the race. Lights out and away we go in Canada. We've got a pretty good start off the line there as we've just passed the Salva of Esteban Gutierrez. We're now going to cut to the inside line of the track because none of the cars seem to cover the inside line. But at the same time, it is a very tight entry into the corner. So we do compromise our exit coming into or our entry point into turn two and our exit of the corner. Hence why jean eric Verne was managed to, managed to repass us and we're back down to 16th place, only gaining three positions off the first two corners. We get a pretty good amount of speed coming out the long right hander prior to the start of sector 2 we've gone down the inside of both Toro Rosso's there leaving a little bit of room on the outside for Daniel Fida I think we might have made a little bit of contact with the Toro Rosso there but we've managed to get away with it with no damage to us next on our next up in front of us is the Lotus of Romain Grosjean now this has been recorded straight after the Belgian Grand Prix and actually Grosjean managed to get a podium finish in that in that race in real life but sadly in this game, in this, in this career mode, he's in the 2014 car, which is obviously not as quick. As we've gone down the inside of the Lotus into the hairpin, had a quick look down the inside into of the Sauber of Adrian Sutil there, but there was too much of a risk considering it is the first lap. So we did lose a little bit of ground to the Sauber in front as we come onto the back straight towards the final chicane, which leads up to the world famous Wall of Champions. Coming to the final chicane now, we get good speed off the last part of the corner. We're coming, up to, coming side by side with the Sauber of Sutil. He's trying to squeeze us into the wall as we start the second lap. Well, I think we're going to go down the inside. Yes, we are. Trying to cover him off to ensure he doesn't make the move stick around the outs inside of the turn two. But we've gone overcooked it into turn two, going wide there. And Sutil has managed to repass us back into 12th place. And we are down, in rele down relegated to 13th. We get, try and get a good drive off the chicane, but there's not enough room. So we weren't able to take advantage of that just yet. We get a good amount of speed once again through the sweeping right hander and we manage to pass Sutil like we did with Kavia and Verne on the previous lap. We're now going to cut to lap number three and we've caught up to the back of the McLaren of Kevin Magnussen. Got a pretty good drive out the corner but the superior Mercedes powered engine in that McLaren allows Magnussen to pull away a little bit. So we're going to try and go down the inside into the hairpin prior to the start of sector three. Of course DRS is in operation and we were behind Magnussen before the DRS detection zone so we will get the benefit of DRS but as we've seen in the past few races even with DRS I've still not been able to hold off faster cars behind me. As you can see a Magnussen is going to try and get our inside prior to the final chicane but we managed to maintain P11 right now to, to ensure that we stay ahead of Magnussen and now we go off after Alonso who looks to try and make a move on Holkenberg in front into turn one but is unable to make a move stick. We're now going to cut to the same point, this time on lap number four. We're right with Alonso this time. See if we can try and make a similar move to what we did on Magnus in the previous lap, going down the inside of the hairpin. But we've messed up, messed up a little bit. We've made contact with the Ferrari, and a, possibly a little bit of contact with the Force India Hulkenberg. 
So we've moved up a position up into ninth place now, but I, what I decided to do was to let Alonso repass us because, because it was an unfair move and an unfair advantage that I got ahead of the Ferrari. So then I didn't use the DRS until Alonso was completely past me. That left me susceptible to Magnussen behind once again. So I had to compromise a little bit of my exit out of the final chicane to avoid any contact. We grazed the wall of champions there. We're now cutting to lap number five to see if we can try and get past Alonso cleanly this time in the same place, go that, going down the hairpin. We do that, but we just we very nearly go past Hulk, but we very nearly make contact with Force India again. But Alonso gets fantastic drive coming out of the hairpin and he's just accelerating away from us, meaning that we're not unable to make a move going into the final chicane. And we're once again under attack from Magnussen going round our outside there. So it looks like we're going to have to make a bit of a dive bomb into the final chicane to ensure we have no contact. No, we we don't make any contact. That's very lucky there. We are now on lap number six in a very similar spot as we've tried to pass Alonso in the pre previous two laps. We've now got a very good drive out of the chicane. We're side by side with the Ferrari this time. But unfortunately, we are on the outside of this corner and Alonso is able to prevent us from overtaking. We have to go round the outside. Of course, we're losing, going to lose a little bit of time. Once again, Alonso gets a fant fantastic drive off the hairpin. So we're unable to gain enough advantages for us to make a possible move into chicane. We still have the DRS from the Ferrari in front of us, but it's not making much difference considering Alonso has the DRS because of Hulkenberg. He makes a little bit of a try to make a little bit of a move on Hulkenberg. We've managed to get a very good exit out of the chicane. Slingshot of past Alonso, and now we're side by side. We're trying to be side by side with Hulkenberg as we start lap number seven. Go down the inside of the Force India into turn one. Can we make the move to stick on like we did with Suto on the first lap? Yes, we do. We're up into 8th place. We are now on to lap number 8, or, to, or the middle of lap number 8. Nothing really happened, to be honest, between me passing Alonso and Hulkenberg into now. But as you can see in front, as we go into the heaven, there's several cars in a long train there. I don't know who's the main leader of that pack, but we could gain a couple of positions when it comes to the pit stop time. And speaking of the pit stop time, we cut to lap number 9, which is our actual pit stop lap. Right behind the McLaren of Jensen Button here. He's not going to be pitting until the next lap, so we're going to try and stay as close as we can to the McLaren without actually passing him so we can make maximum impact of the undercut using the fresh tyres. Coming up to the back straight, we're in the DRS range of the McLaren, but I have to brake a little bit le earlier than what I normally do to avoid hitting the McLaren. Because normally I try and accelerate straight on into the pit and use the automatic pit limiter to slow, me, slow the car down to gain as much time as possible. Looked to have held up the Red Bull in the pit stops there, but he doesn't seem to have lost them too much time because we're going to have to come in for our pit stop. Let's hope it's good. Yes, it is. We've now rejoined just behind a Williams. I think that's, that's, that is Massa in front of us. We come and accelerate. The, the pit exit leads us out into turn two. As you can see, we have actually jumped jumped a car. I think that's the we've jumped the Ferrari of Kimi Raikkonen there. So that has worked out a treat. He must have pitted the lap earlier, and then we must have used the overcut to a very, to very good effect. We're now going to cut to later on in the lap. We're right with the Williams of Felipe Massa. I think he's struggling with his tyres again on the new fresh cold tyres. I don't know what it is about the AI and struggling on fresh rubber after they've made the pit stops. We were side by side with the Williams coming into the hairpin. We might be able to go around the outside of the Williams going into the hairpin, which we have done. We may be susceptible to DRS though, I'm not 100% sure if I was, be I was behind Massa prior to the DRS detection zone, but we will find out momentarily. So yes, I was in the DRS zone of Massa before the overtake, but look at that, Massa's just driving straight back past us there. Look how powerful that Mercedes engine is compared, even with the DRS in operation with for us, we, c we were overtaking it once again. But Massa seems to have lost a lot of time whilst we, we passed him going through the chicane. As you can see, we're going to come up into the first corner. That's Jensen Button coming out of the pit stops. He's jumped several cars. He's possibly ahead of Ricardo. No, Ricardo managed to maintain that position in front of us. But we're still right behind the McLaren of Button. So that overcut, that undercut hasn't actually worked for us. But you, as you can see here, we're going to drive completely around the outside of Button. I don't know what happened to Button there. This is an onboard from Button's perspective using the replay mode. As you can see, we just drive completely straight past him like he's not there. No defending whatsoever from the McLaren. Anyways, we're now off in pursuit of the Red Bull of Daniel Ricciardo. We're pretty close to him, but we may have to use a dive bomb down the inside into the head if we want to get this position. 
We're going to go for it down the inside for fourth place. Ricardo seems to know we're coming. That's very good driving and very good awareness from the Australian to see us coming down the inside and letting us, well not letting us through, but giving the space just to ensure there's no contact. We've also got a bit of the DRS from Ricardo behind, but he's side by side with us anyway, because he must have had very good drive off that hairpin. As we come into the final chicane, we completely mess it up, com mess it up, and we've hit the wall of champions and damaged our front wing. So that means we're going to have to use a flashback. So apologies, guys. But yeah, that was fantastic wheel-to-wheel -wheel action between the two, the two friends of Bianchi and Ricardo. They're very good. They were very good friends in the earlier formulas, and it was very good to see us two battling once again. Going into the chicane for the second time of asking, we actually become a little bit more conservative on the chicane this time because we were in front. We can we can afford to do that though as we come on to start lap number 12. We're now going to cut to the start of lap number 13. We're now off in pursuit of third place man, which is Valtteri Bottas in front. Pace is stronger than Bottas. He's losing a full second a lap to you. Ricardo is losing a second a lap to you. So as you heard from the engineer, we are closing the gap on Bottas by around a second a lap. You saw from the split times, possibly, that we're around five, five, five and a half seconds behind. We're now putting it up into fast fuel mix to see if we can catch the Williams here. But unfortunately, I start losing a little bit of pace. I don't know if it's to do with the tyres or I'm becoming a little bit ragged. But the gap is still around 5.1 seconds despite us apparently closing in by one second per lap. But now we're stuck behind the caterum of Kamui Kobayashi. This is going to hurt us considerably when it comes to in coming into pursuit with Bottas and if we want to continue with the podium streak that we've been on since the start of the season. Having to go right around the outside of the catering there, we've lost a bucket a lot of time, understeering wide into the corner, and I have no idea why that's a corner cut, considering I, lo I understeered wide and lost some time, I think. Anyways, we're going to cut to lap number 16. Bottas is around three tenths a lap faster than you. So as you heard from the engineer, we only lost three tenths to Bottas, but I think that three tenths is going to cost us a pos the podium finish today, and unfortunately we may have to settle for fourth place. We're still going to push as hard as we possibly can though, we're now going to cut to the start, the end of the second sector of lap number 16, you're going to notice the split times here, we've managed to take out around about nine tenths, the gap is around about four and a half seconds now, so we're continuing to push extremely hard to try and close in on Bottas, we're now going to cut to the start of the final lap and we're going to see what the gap is as you can see on the split times the gap is now down to 3.1 seconds and that's Bottas in the distance it looks like he's got a couple of lap cars to overtake I don't think he's that close to the Mercedes in, with respect to this current race as we're going to come into the first sector we're going to stay with this recording until the end of the race now to see if we can have a possible overtake towards the end as we come into the first sect, end of the first sector where the gap is now down to around 2.9 seconds. So it looks like Bottas hasn't lost a lot of time just yet, but I think he's right in the slipstream of the back markers this time. So this is where he could possibly be cost the podium finish as we come into the very well, the second last chicane of the circuit. As you can see, he's side by side with the car. I'm not 100% sure who that is. We're going to come into the split times now as we come into the hairpin. As you can see, he's lost 1.2 seconds there by overtaking that car. I think that's, Gro that's Grosjean in front, but I think it's too little too late for us. We're not going to be able to make a move on Bottas. He's just managed to get away from us, and he's got that barrier of Grosjean in between him and us. We come on to the final back straight of the race. Nico Rosberg has actually won his first race of the season, beating Lewis House. He's coming to the final chicane. These two, these two Gutierrez and Grosjean are having a fantastic scrap coming on to the final, final straight and they're going to end up having to finish that scrap early as we come across the line in fourth place. Mercedes have won today's race and what a result for the team. Nicky Lauda rightly called it as one of the drives of the season. Confirmation of the race results, Rosberg in first, Hamilton second, Bottas getting his first podium of the season in third, Us, myself in fourth, Massa fifth, Ricardo in sixth, Reichen in seventh, Jensen Button down in eighth, so the pit stop strategy didn't work out in the end, Vettel all the way down in ninth, that's not very good for Red Bull 
in their battle with us. And then Fernando Alonso taking the final point in 10th. Max Chilton finishing all the way up in 17th there. That's a very good result. And Marcus Ericsson is the only retirement of this race. We're now going to cut to the Drivers' Championship. I think we are still in second place. Yes, we are. We're now 40 points behind Lewis Hamilton. Ricardo's moved in front of Vettel after outscoring him in today's race. There's no changes anywhere else in the championship right now. In the Constructors' Championship, Russia are now only 8 points behind Red Bull despite not achieving a podium today, with Mercedes continuing to dominate the standings with over a 130-point lead over their nearest rivals. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please like, comment and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you for the next race where we, the teams and ourselves head back to Europe. For the first time since 2003, we were heading off to Austria for the Austrian Grand Prix at the newly named Red Bull Ring. Until then, see you later.